Hello, welcome to episode one of the Beer Cookbook Show. My name is David Ort, and I am the author of the Canadian Craft Beer Cookbook. Um, I'm really excited to uh, get this YouTube channel going because I think it's going to be a great place for sharing some of my ideas about beer in general, about matching beer with food, um, cooking with beer, and also hopefully answering some of your questions. Uh, when I do in-person events, workshops, and recipe demonstrations, I find that audience questions really are what drive uh, the best parts of the event. And so I hope that you'll send in your questions uh, and I'll just any questions you have about beer, beer and food, um, cooking with beer, and I'll do my best to, to answer them. So for episode one, I thought the natural place to start would be with the foundation that I use for um, all those workshops and, uh, and events that I do uh, related to my cookbook. Um, and th that foundation is the uh, four guidelines I have for beginners to start cooking with beer. Um, the first guideline or rule is uh, if you have a recipe that calls for a beer, don't sweat finding that particular beer. Um, concentrate more on the style uh, that the beer comes from. So, for instance, in my book, I've got a recipe for pumpkin beer mustard. Um, two pumpkin beers here today, one from Ontario, one from Quebec. Um, both great for that recipe, but if you can't find these two pumpkin beers and you still want to make my recipe for pumpkin beer mustard, um, pretty much any pumpkin beer will do. The, the key or the key with understanding using craft beers in recipes is that there are thousands of them and that depending on what part of the world you're in, what part of North America you're in, you may not be able to find all of them. So um, go into your local beer store and ask them to help you find a pumpkin beer and you should be set for that recipe. Um, so rule number two is uh, when you're cooking with beer, this is kind of a safety first rule. When you're cooking with beer, know that um, when beer hits a hot pan or pot, it really wants to foam. Many orders of magnitude more than it would foam in a glass. Uh, so to keep from having messy, possibly unsafe boil overs, you want to select a pot or pan that is, can, is bigger than you think you'll need. Um, air on the high side when you're picking a vessel to cook beer in. Uh, that ties nicely into Guideline number three, which is be careful when reducing bitter beers. Um, so if you're making a, a sauce or um, some stews, salad dressings that call for beer, often we'll have you reduce the beer. Uh, and in those cases, if you're starting with a bitter beer and boiling away a lot of the water in it, uh, that bitterness is gonna concentrate and um, it possibly to unpleasant levels. Uh, so my general guideline is uh, when using beers in reductions, sauces, things that are going to lose more than, say, 25% of its water, um, you want to stick to beers that are below about 35 IBUs. Um, so that's rule number three. Rule number four is a fairly specific one, but I think it, it applies quite generally because one of beer's most popular um, uses in the kitchen something we've probably all tried is beer batter. Beer battered onion rings, beer battered fish, beer battered shrimp. Um, I have recipes for some of those in the book. Uh, and making those recipes is a lot easier if you use cold beer. Um, the kind of sciencey explanation there is that cold liquids hold on to bubbles better than warm ones do. Uh, and if you're making a batter, you want it to be light and crisp um, and those things happen best if the bubbles stay in the batter. Uh, and for that to, to happen, for the bubbles to stay in the batter, you want your beer to be definitely fridge cold, uh, even into the freezer for a few minutes, kind of helps out making batters. And so that's, that's rule number four. Um, to quickly review, rule number one is don't sweat the specific beer, stick to the style. Rule number two is err on the safe side and use a bigger pot than you think you need for cooking beer. Rule number three is um, be careful of reducing bitter beers because the bitterness can concentrate to an unpleasant level. And rule number four, uh, when making a beer batter, you want your beer to be as cold as possible, or colder than, colder than you'd want it to drink. 
Uh, so those are my four guidelines to start off cooking with beer. Um, thanks very much for joining me. As I say, questions are something I'm really keen on getting. Um, so all the usual places, social media, Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, find me in those places. Leave comments below here. Uh, check out my book. It's on Amazon and in uh, local bookstores. Um, and definitely subscribe to this channel because I'm going to be back with more great beer and food content. Thanks for joining me for the first episode of the Beer Cookbook Show. See you guys next time. <laughs>